Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. You're you, us two again, classic. Let's roll into it. Here are the top 10 cruel punishments from history that actually existed. Yeah, it's not really a fun one. Let's do it. Starting our list off at number 10, trial by elephants. Yeah, we'll start with animals. You know what? I love animals, why not? First of all, I'm not sure if you've ever seen an elephant in real life before, but these things are mightier than you can ever imagine. They're gorgeous animals, but they're incredibly dangerous to be near. Their foot is like, it's massive, it's like a huge tree stump, it's insane. For this punishment, we have to head to a place, of course, where elephants can be found. That's probably a promising start. South and Southeast Asia. Elephants have been trained for years to trample the accused. Now, depending on which elephant you get in this horrible, horrible demise, they were trained to either get the job done fast or slow. Yeah, imagine an elephant getting the job done quickly. Sounds like something you'd never want to witness for yourself, right? Wrong. No, these punishments were all public. It was almost like a show, like ancient Romans Colosseum. We think of that and we think of lions and we're like, wow, that must have been terrifying. Yeah, imagine that, but now it's an elephant with a big floppy nose too, really loud. They're loud, that's a scary way to go. But at least that's a quick way to go, unlike this next one here. Number nine, drawing and quartering. You know you're screwed when there's an and, drawing and quartering. Wait, there's more. This is one of the most infamous methods of punishments. Now, this punishment was first doled out in England back in the 13th century. Now, the accused was, of course, as you'd guess, drawn or tied to a horse and then dwelt, dragged to the gallows. And then at that point, they would usually be hanged, maybe disemboweled, maybe beheaded, maybe be withered. I don't know, other words that start with B, that's pretty horrible. Afterwards, the guilty was, of course, as you guessed, quartered. In other words, he had his body split into different parts, you know. Some, sometimes each limb would be tied to a different horse and they'd have them run in different directions. It was creative, if I'm being honest, a little bit creative. The choreography, the timing here, it was impeccable. This punishment was reserved for those guilty of treason and was thankfully abolished back in 1867. So no more horses involved, poor animals. Number eight, strapado. Strapado sounds like an Italian artist. It's for sure not, it's definitely not an artist, no. It's creative, again, I'll admit, but in the worst ways. It's an uncomfortable form of punishment, unlike others on this list, it doesn't necessarily always end in death. In strapado, the guilty is strung up by their wrists behind their head. Now, at first, this doesn't sound too bad, but, Again, just wait. The awkward angle is pretty much guaranteed to cause dislocation of the shoulders. But if that doesn't really kill you, weights may be added. And then at that point, your body's not gonna recover. Thought to have originated in medieval times, of course, always medieval times, could have guessed that one. During the Inquisition, Trapado has been used, sadly, into the 21st century. I don't know what they do in UFC, but there's probably a little bit strapado going on there. A little arm bar strapado? No, no thanks. Number seven, keel hauling. As somebody who's not a fan of water, this type of punishment I can't even imagine. I wouldn't even get on the boat to begin with. Already scary. It sounds like something from Game of Thrones and it can vary depending on how bad the ocean or the boat is. Imagine that as a lead up. Yeah, the ocean looks pretty rough today. Maybe you'll make it. This punishment was reserved, of course, for sailors. Sailors at sea couple of naughty mateys. Now, it was first performed by the Dutch Navy back in the late 16th century, and what would happen was, while well, the accused, they would be tied with a rope and then dragged underwater from one end of a ship all the way to the other, around the rudder, around all that bad shit down there. And while many died, obviously, being flossed around a pirate ship covered in barnacles, it wasn't always fatal, if you can believe that. Not always, but a good amount of time, definitely. Yeah, you're not coming back from that. I can't even hold my breath for that long, no way. Number six, molten metal. I don't have to explain this one. This is, you've seen Game of Thrones. This is the worst. This should have been number one, maybe. I don't know, I'm guessing myself right now. This skin crawling punishment was a form of capital punishment because, well, yeah, there's no way you're gonna bounce back from this. While gruesome, this punishment has a fairly simple explanation. They would just pour molten metal or something extremely hot and not great down the accused throat. I'll, I'll tell you what, that's that's probably gonna do the trick. At least it's gonna be fast, right? In Game of Thrones, it was pretty fast. There was like three minutes left in the episode. Guy did it, boom, roll credits. That's fine, that's a good way to go. Beats elephants, in my humble opinion. Usually during this punishment, they would do things to ensure that your throat would stay open during the pouring of the hot, hot metal. And to that, I have to ask, does that even matter at this point? Put on my face, my back, my feet, either way, I'm fainting and I'm not waking up. Sounds like that show, Uh-Oh, from the 90s. Just dumping things. I don't want anything dumped on me. Milk, molten metal, rats, nothing. Number five, sawing. Yeah, sawing. You know, again, another one I don't have to explain too much here, hopefully. Mostly seen in Rome, Spain, and some portions of Asia. It's common, it's a pretty common, straightforward idea, sawing is. You can imagine this one already, right? We sure hope you can because, well, we can't show it. 
of course. This is another straightforward one, unfortunately. Capital punishment at its cruelest, getting sawed in half. Again, to the public. Yeah, here's a fun one. Here's a fun show. Drive-in movies or sawing? I'm not sure. Here's a fact that some folk don't quite realize. This one sends shivers down my spine. But sometimes the sawing was done from top to bottom, not side to side. It's almost impressive, right? It's like cutting a carrot in half vertically. It's a little awkward. It's rolling around a bit. But you know what? They did it somehow through bones and your soul. Mozzatello, occasionally used by the papal states for only some of the most, you know, terrible crimes or crimes that were considered bad at the time. Basically the person who was being taken care of, they would be led to a scaffold that was located again in the public square, classic. Everyone come on out, grab your family, your aunts, your uncles, we're watching something today, classic. This person would be accompanied by a priest and on the scaffold would lie a coffin. How fitting, a coffin and of course a masked executioner who is dressed in all black with the zipper mouth probably, I don't know. A prayer would be said for the soul of the condemned, because I mean, sure, everyone's watching, like, oh yes, of course. And then when that time came, the executioner would swing a mallet into the air and then bring it down on the head of the prisoner. Now, sometimes, and hopefully this one blow would be enough to take their lives, and sometimes it would just render them unconscious, which would then lead them to their throat being, you know, you get it. None of these sound great, but this one, it sucks really bad. It's like, hey, you're gonna get hit, and then it might get worse, I don't know. Necklacing. I'm never wearing my necklace ever again. Here we go. Necklacing is a terrifying practice that involves a rubber tire, not a necklace, a rubber tire, and unfortunately it involves a human being as well. The rubber tire is filled with petrol, which is then put around the victim's chest and arms and they can't move, and then after that they are set ablaze. Yeah, you figured that was coming. You think I'm talking about the hills have eyes or something terrible, but no, this was real life. I mean, I'm sure you can figure out what happens next, but this method sadly can take up to 20 minutes for somebody to pass away from. Little different than the elephant stuff. You know what I mean? They're just left suffering the whole entire time. This one wasn't too public. Nobody could stick around for this one. Cause you know, 20 minutes, no way. I could barely get through a 10 minute YouTube video. You wanna watch this guy burn for 20 minutes? Good joke, how horrible. Impalement. This was another one that was highly requested by you guys. I've heard you comment on this a couple times. So yeah, I'll talk about it, sure, you weirdos. Impaling, do impaling, long neck, impaling. I'm like, you got it. I hear ya, I see ya, let's make it happen. Vlad the Third, also known as Vlad the Impaler or something like that. He liked doing a little bit of something like this. This was a popular form of punishment for a very long time, sadly, and was most commonly used as a response to crimes against the state. Although Mr. Vlad, we just mentioned, basically did it to everybody that he didn't like, so I suppose to each their own, sure. All right, Vlad the Third. Maybe Vlad the Fourth won't do that. Let's hope. Impalement was a method of both torture and obviously execution that involved, well, just slowly driving a stake or a pole or a spear or a big carrot, something pointy or whatever, through a person in order to completely or partially um, perforate their torso. There we go. I sound like a Victorian scientist. You can impale somebody vertically or again horizontally if you want to spice it up. Instead of going this way, you go. Oh, that's really bad. Ducking stools. Medieval times, here we go. If you can do math, you're going for a swim. This was a punishment used in the 16th and 17th century in England and New England. And it was uh, usually a punishment that was reserved for women. Women who uh, could do bed mass. There you go, you're a witch. Have a, have a nice dip. This punishment was given to a woman for doing what was considered unwomanly things. Back then, whatever that was supposed to mean. And it was ridiculous. Apparently this included things like having an argument with their husband, taking a dip, fighting with the neighbors, you're going for a swim. Gossiping and backstabbing, how dare thee, you're going swimming. Whoever made these rules clearly had never met a man or a friend because newsflash, everyone does all of those things. I did all those before I even came in here to film, so hopefully I don't get dunked in the river. But basically this punishment would see a woman being tied up to a stool and then dropped into a lake or stream over and over again while a bunch of dudes with no teeth watched and they're like, yeah, that's what you get for being smart. And talking back with your opinions on International Women's Day. We're posting this one too, eh? How ironic is that? Those are the top 10 cruel punishments from history that actually existed. My mind's blown, I feel sick. I'm gonna go throw up while you click subscribe. We'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Peace.